This is The Scoop for Wednesday. I'm Sean Canan with the WMNF News Headlines. A bill that would lower the minimum age from 21 to 18 to purchase rifles and shotguns in Florida was approved yesterday by a state house panel, but its future remains in doubt as the proposal has not been filed in the Senate. The bill, called HB 1223, was approved by the Republican-controlled House Criminal Justice Subcommittee. It would reverse an age requirement that was included in a school safety law passed after the 2018 massacre at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland. The House approved a bill last year to lower the minimum age from 21 to 18, but the Senate did not take up the measure. A bill advanced in a state Senate committee yesterday loosening restrictions on labor laws for 16- and 17-year-olds in Florida. WMNF's Chris Young reports the bill is a less extreme version of a House bill that seeks to roll back child labor laws. Under the bill, 16- and 17-year-olds could work from 5.30 a.m. to midnight. Under current law, the limit is from 6.30 a.m. to 11 p.m. The bill is sponsored by Zephyr Hills Republican Senator Danny Burgess. What drew me to this issue is we homeschool. My kids are homeschooled, and so they're too young to work right now. But when they become of age, they may be done with school by 1 p.m. The bill also allows the state to grant waivers of certain child labor restrictions. Most public comment was against the bill. Gretchen Robinson is a teacher from Orlando. We need to let these kids sleep, right? Kids need to be in school. They need to not be sleep deprived because the manager at McDonald's can now give them a choice between closing on a school night or not being able to keep the job that's likely helping their family keep a roof over their heads. Orlando Democratic Senator Linda Stewart voted against the bill. The 16-year-olds should not be out uh, working till midnight, getting home about 1 o'clock in the morning most of the time because of the drive issues. I think it's just too dangerous. The bill advanced 4-1 to one in the Senate Commerce and Tourism Committee. For WMNF News, I'm Chris Young. Governor Ron DeSantis' administration had quietly reversed a policy that allowed Floridians to obtain driver's licenses that reflected their gender identity. One critic is calling it part of an ongoing campaign to make Florida uninhabitable and unsafe for transgender individuals. On Friday, the deputy executive director of the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles sent a memo outlining the changes to county tax collectors. The memo said that allowing people to change their gender on licenses and ID cards runs afoul of state law because gender, according to the memo, has historically been understood as a synonym for sex, which is determined by innate and immutable biological and genetic characteristics. That description is disputed. Florida is among Republican-controlled states during the past few years that have taken a series of steps targeting transgender people and the broader LGBTQ community. Critics allege that the efforts amount to an attempt to legislate or regulate trans people out of existence. Controversial proposals that would prevent local governments from removing or destroying an array of historic monuments and markers are moving forward in the Florida House and Senate. The Republican-controlled State House Affairs Committee backed a revamped bill yesterday that came after numerous local governments the past few years removed monuments to the Confederacy. In addition to prohibiting the removal or destruction of longtime statues and markers, the bill also would allow people and groups to file civil lawsuits over removals. The bill's Republican sponsor said there's been a war on historic monuments by local governments. Opponents argued the bill is about protecting monuments put up decades after the Civil War to celebrate the Confederacy and white supremacy. Yesterday, a Florida House committee approved a key change to a proposal that could impose fees on people who file numerous objections to school library books and other learning materials. The issue is now ready to go to the full House. An earlier version of the bill proposed a $100 processing fee for people who file more than five book objections in a calendar year if the people do not have students enrolled in the schools where the books are challenged. But under the change approved yesterday by the House Education and Employment Committee, the fees would only be assessed if books Book challenges are unsuccessful. The House panel unanimously approved the revised bill. Today it'll be mostly sunny and windy and warm with highs in the high 60s. Tonight mostly clear and cool. Overnight lows will be in the mid 40s and tomorrow partly cloudy and warm with highs in the high 60s. I'm Sean Canan with the WMNF News Headlines. This is The Scoop, recorded at WMNF Tampa. 